Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. So last time we left off in the nether, near the central Heather, Heather ne ne uh, Nether Hub. Uh, so I consider this, obviously, this was the first nether portal in the nether. Just happened to come up with this spot on this sort of cliff area next to the nether fortress. Um, and then I came down to figure out a portal to my base. It happened to be over here. And since I laid out the whole nether hub, uh, this in my brain is kind of the center of it all even if it's not necessarily true. So um, there's, as I said, there's a lot of stuff down that way. Um, but I think for this episode, uh, we're going to head south because there's a lot of stuff to the south. Well, just a couple of things, but there's stuff to the south. So let's head on down this way. Um, so as I said, all of the nether hub is laid out at this level makes it convenient and we don't have to put in stairs or hop around or anything. <clears throat> and then I enclosed the nether fortress um, with white concrete on the floor and red glass around the sides. And it's a little odd that there's nobody in there, but from the distance, it made it easy to see any spots that were going on inside. Actually, it's very strange that there are no spots. I see mushrooms over there that's this is really weird oh there's a pig man but normally there would be blazes and wither skulls skeletons and all that good stuff so with the the floor i made it so that they would be easy to see from a distance so you could tell whether you need to come in or not um oh one other thing and it's a ways down here and we will probably encounter some blazes on the way, like this guy. Ah. Um, <clears throat> let me just run here. They should miss them. I did build a blaze farm. Oh, there's the wither skeletons. Hey, guys. Having a party, huh? Uh, so I built a, a uh, blaze farm. And... Come up here within range of the blaze farm, and I turn it on right here. Up. That turns off the lights up there, and the blazes will spawn, and they get pushed down into a killing chamber here, and then I can crush them, and they should get pushed down into the killing chamber. Um, this guy's being somewhat resistant. That's okay. Whoa, shoot, ah, hello. Where did he come from? He must have followed me down. Eat. I don't want to die here. Okay, jeez. Wow, I've never had that happen before. Anyway, so this this was a, uh, this was a XP farm initially. It works pretty well for that, and also you can get blaze rods. Need to eat again. Didn't quite get fully healed up. Okay. So this is the on-off switch to the farm. This was an interesting, uh, interesting thing to build because it was. Uh, because it's over, as you can see, it's just over a huge lava lake. Just the lava ocean. Attached to the, you know, hanging off the side of this uh, <clears throat> nether fortress. Uh, and I put in an enchanting table and a brewing stand because it seemed useful at the time. And I was collecting some of the stuff that you kind of get out of it. And 
So this is, you know, this is useful getting blaze rods and stuff like that, but... Huh, where'd the rest of those uh, wither skeletons go? Huh, they uh, clearly found a way to get to me. Whoa. There's somebody behind me. Whoa. Okay. And I built these uh, sidewalks here. They're just a little too short for the uh, for the wither skeletons to come up on. So you can stand here and whack at them, and and if you if you have knockback on your sword, they can get stuck. Just a little unfortunate, but so this was a good place to do some farming of uh, wither skeleton skulls to make beacons. And a pretty good source of, uh, you know, this uh, <clears throat> magma cream. That's right. Oh, wow. So a bunch of them spawned. Oh, okay, let's take care of these guys and... Oh. Interesting. Okay, guys. So when I walked in here, this place was empty. There's no one here. And now it's just hopping. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Come on, dude. Or you're stuck. They're all over the place. Okay, I don't need to be doing this. Because there's no value in it. I guess. Okay. So, yeah, and the, the main point of having the, the tunnels like this is to have protection from the gas flying around. In 1.17, there's... They're not... It's not super consistent to which uh, biomes... There's multiple biomes in the nether now, which is kind of cool. So here I have railway that goes out to a couple places, but this is the main thing I want to show you. I built a pyramid and I wanted to build the, the Grand Pyramid, the Great Pyramid of Giza. And this is us inside it. What time is it? Okay, let's go outside while it's still light out. Uh, I spent a lot of time in here and we will can, we will do that and we'll talk about all the little stuff that I've got in here. Oh. Okay. So, uh, I did some research. Nope. And so, what is that up there? I, that, hopefully, it's just the doctor's. get some distance here. <laughs> you have no idea how much this isn't uh, I wanted to build yeah okay the doctor's been up here. Uh, I wanted to build the pyramid to scale in Minecraft scale and unfortunately because it's at a, the angle of the sides doesn't really match Oh, hello. Uh, it doesn't, uh, you can't really build at that angle in Minecraft. So I had to make some compromises. The pyramid is about the right footprint. It's just not quite the right height. Uh, and I think it's, the world's a little too short for, uh, for the real thing anyway. But anyway, this is, you know, I wanted to kind of get it roughly approximate. 
And this is why when I started building that other desert area, it just, there wasn't enough room. It wasn't big enough. This thing is gargantuan. Uh, and, and I wanted to put like the entrance to the pyramid is, I have it in approximately the right position. It is a little bit off center on one side. And so this leads into a, a tunnel that enters down inside the, uh, the pyramid. And inside the pyramid, then there are multiple sort of additional tunnels that branch off of that. And this is one of them. Uh, and if I can remember how to... Ah. Come on. Huh. Is there... Do I have a ladder missing? Maybe I do. Let's put this down here. <clears throat> there we go. So this goes up into the burial chambers. This is the Grand Hall, which was blocked by big pieces of concrete are big, big stones that they use to sort of block it off once they buried the uh, the pharaoh and his wife. This is the wife's burial chamber, and the ceilings were vaulted like this. And I don't remember why I put the daylight sensor there, but that was kind of what it looked like on the inside as best as they knew. Uh, because, of course, when, you know, the, the pyramid had been looted... And robbers had dug in a, uh, a an entrance closer to ground level. And that's how they got inside it. Uh, and then up here is the, the pharaoh's burial chamber. And he had a sarcophagus. And it was this pink granite, which actually fits the granite in the game pretty well. Uh, so that's why I built this room. And it's in, I think, approximately the correct place. And the interesting thing is that if we go down below, um, the... So I have the, there's a subterranean chamber as well. Uh, <clears throat> so where I came into on the inside is, is the sea level or it's at the ground floor. Um, so let's go down here. And that's right here. So this is my secret entrance into the inside of the pyramid. But originally they built down, and you can ignore that entryway right there for a moment. They built down. And the walkway is short, so this sort of banging your head on it is kind of appropriate. But uh, they built, they dug all the way down below, and that's where they think they initially wanted the burial chamber, because on pyramids before, that's kind of where it had been. Um, so then they come down here, and then there's this sort of subterranean level, and I got the layout of this about correct. And then they started digging in here, and the thought was that they were going to put the pharaoh's wife's chamber down here but then they gave up for some reason and then they went up and they they changed their mind and they dug chambers up above so those chambers are above ground or they're above ground level uh they're obviously inside the pyramid itself so if we come back up here so this passage that i told you, you could ignore that's here and I had this ambitious thing. This is the floor level of the pyramid above, which we'll get to. And I was going to dig out a chamber underneath that kind of, I was just going to take it to bedrock. And I just never, never got to it. Um, but then this is the, the pyramid itself. And, and I have this here, this lever, because I have a, um, you can switch it the door, you could open and close the door by putting that on the floor in the hallway and, and sort of doing it. So this is the inside of the pyramid. And you can see the chambers, the burial chambers here. <clears throat> so this is the king's chamber up there and the queen's chamber here. And I built it in space roughly where they are. I found some nice detailed drawings of the pyramid and the interior, and I think I got it pretty good. Um, and so I was, was like, okay, well, what can I do with this area? 
there was a there was a village in here. Uh, this gold block. This is the center. Look up. That's the very top of the pyramid. So this is the center of the whole thing. And this is the point at which you can pretty much see the whole interior. It's a huge space. So there was a desert village in, in this spot, and I decided to hang on to it. Uh, by the time I got here, all the villagers were dead. Uh, <clears throat> so we, you know, so I have some, I do have some farming here, and I have some uh, miscellaneous stuff here. Oh, that's right. So I built little farms uh, because I needed villagers for some stuff over here. And so I have these villager guys and I have some farmers. Hi. And yeah, so this is this guy's a fisherman. Uh, but he will because he's a brown shirt, or at least in the in the pre previous version of the game, he would do he would farm. So I had these little areas here, then I have a composter there to try and make this guy think he's a farmer, and so uh, this was a way I wanted to get all the carrots out of his pocket, all the potatoes out of his pocket. So, and he doesn't he seems to be empty. So I would walk around behind him, and when he planted stuff, I'd dig it up after him. Um, and so I've got some other farmers. I've got a couple nitwits here that I was going to do some breeding stuff with. And I have some other guys here. And these all should be carrot. These are all carrot farmers. At least in theory, they all just have carrots in their inventory. Uh, and the reason for that was my little one chunk farms over here. So I started came up with this idea of doing single chunk farms farms that fit inside of a single chunk and and I've, I've got them going oh that's right so I was going to put a carrot farm chunk in here and here I have a potato farm chunk so I have potato farms uh, so I have a farmer in there and I've got a little the lighting is such that there's a couple of spots here where the you just can't plant anything. The light level is just a little too low. And if he comes over and tries to plant in one of those spots, the potato that he plants just pops immediately off, and then there's a hopper below to pick it up. And then they get run into this shulker box loader device here. Um... <clears throat> And then when those shulker boxes get full, they end up in here. So I've just got shulker boxes full of potatoes here. Okay. Um, so that's cool. And then these are just my leftover supplies for building these farms. Um, this farm, this is a sugar cane farm. Real simple sugar cane farm. Uh, with observers that when the sugar can on the end grows up, this whole line uh, it triggers a line of slime blocks that pushes all those plants, breaks it off, and goes down. Shulker box loader inside here, and shulker box is full of sugar cane. Um, this farm here does not work anymore, but it's a squid farm. So I have squid ink here, quite a bit of it. And oh, I'm forgetting how this was all laid out. There was oh, there's an entrance over here. We could look down the inside. So this was a there's water up there with little chambers for the squid to spawn in, and they fall down and splat on the thing, and the hoppers pick up their ink sacs. Squid don't spawn here anymore as of this version, so this is kind of a, this farm is dead. And this is a big cactus farm. Pretty straightforward cactus farm. Signs to break the cactus as they try to grow. And shulker boxes full of cactus. So tons and tons of resources. And this is a sheep farm. Um,
So I can come here and uh, take the thing, uh, take the minecart down, and I've just got sheep of all different um, colors down in here. And uh, and then I've got um, hoppers to pick up the, the wool and bring them up here. Uh, they should be empty because I collected them all. So anyway, that's how I was getting wool. It's not the most efficient or well laid out um, wool farm, but it works. And then this is a slime farm. And you can see down there. So this is a single chunk slime farm. It's here because, of course, this is where the slimes were. This was the slime chunk inside the pyramid. And I've got sugar boxes full of slime balls. Completely passive. It's got uh, uh, iron golems down here to, to lure the slimes yeah, on down below and to a, a cactus. Um, and then hoppers to pick up their drops. So there's that. Uh, and then in the middle here was kind of, it took a, I, there was like a mountain on this site. And so I had to tear that all down. And so I ended up with a lot of sand and a lot of sandstone, uh, which I put into shulker boxes in here. And um, that was how I, got all the blocks to build all this, but there were plenty of blocks left over. So that was kind of my source of where to get sand to make uh, glass and whatnot. And I was gonna put um, a lot of cats in here because, yeah, because cats, because uh, it's Egypt, you know, the cats were kind of a sacred thing. And then these were my two starter sheep. Uh, from which all the others in the sheep farm or the wool farm were bred. And then I've got cows over here. And notice that because this is in a desert, there's grass down here. These two pens inadvertently turned into rabbit rabbit farms because <laughs> the rabbits will spawn in here. Uh, so anyway, this is the pyramid. And um, yeah, so this was, this was a lot of fun. And I was going to dig down below and had plans for other farms. I was going to essentially duplicate the uh, carrot farm here, or the potato farm here, for a carrot farm over here, and just, you know, ran out of steam a little bit. So that is Giza. Uh, and there are there are some desert temples and whatnot nearby, but we don't need to do that. And I have a giant spruce tree here in order to give me wood where needed. Um, because when you're out in the middle of the desert, resources are a little bit tight. Okay, so let's get back going and go on to the next thing to the south of my uh, my base spawn. Um, and I pulled, these fence gates are here because I pulled villagers out of my uh, village underneath my base, put them in boats. Um, took them to the portal, pushed them into the, took them out of the boat, pushed them into the portal, captured them in a boat, sailed them in the boat down along here and along here, broke the boat and pushed them into the portal. And then it's just a matter of waiting for them to decide they're gonna move in the right location to actually go through the portal. These fence gates here were kind of an airlock to prevent them from wandering away from the portal area. So that's all that was. Okay, so next, the next one down is a pretty big distance, so we're going to take the train. Huh. Interesting, that didn't work. All right, so there's a couple things down here. Um, let's pop in here first. So, 
This is a big hole in the ground. That's all. Just a big hole in the ground. Um, ran into some lava lakes over there. Because we are... We're pretty low. We're down at like... Um, <laughs> y equals 6. So we're below lava lakes. So digging out that wall became a little bit challenging. And honestly, I have no idea what I was going to do down here. I'm sure I had an idea, but I was just a big dig area and I was playing around. Um, over here, I did some, some experimentation with putting black glass on top of the, the bedrock and throwing little buckets of lava here and there. I think this is kind of a cool look. And of course, nothing can spawn on here, so it kind of works out. Um, <clears throat> but inside here, I have string farm. And the idea is that you would throw a shulker box here and it would feed stuff out of the, uh, the collection chest and into the shulker box. And you can hear the spiders doing their thing. Um, and so I've got this, oh, I can turn it on and off. It was on. Anyway, um, I'm not going to go inside there because it's a bit treacherous, but there was uh, just waterways pushing the spiders into cactus. Nothing too fancy. Uh, so anyway, this is this is that area. And let's move on to the next, which is the Taiga Island. <clears throat> so I came over here looking for a place uh, for a where I could get dogs. And so we came out here on a taiga island. So this is this whole island is a taiga biome and not a whole lot else. And I flattened I flattened it out, took away a lot of the or somewhat flattened it, took away a lot of the features. Oh, it's in the wild dogs. So dogs spawn here, or the wolves spawn here. And I do have some bones. So I could come over here and try and tame the dogs. Come on. I don't have that many bones. Ah, okay. Uh, so anyway, that's that's that. So you can see, I actually got quite a few wolves here. Uh, and then I just built a little shack over here just to have some place to, uh, to store stuff. And I've got a bunch of dogs back in my little bestiary at back in my base, and they all came from here. Um, and the, the little shack here was just a way to get out in the night. I believe there's a bed in here. Yep. And just, you know, the basics. Um, and over there is my ice farm. Hello, Mr. Dolphin. So. Let's go up over here. I believe there's a bed out over this way if we need it. Um, but I've got everything pretty well lit up. So I did a couple things here. I did a... Um, and I wanted... It, it was convenient because there was a cold biome over here. That's why that is built where it is. And there's a snow farm here. I've got a snowman covered up so he doesn't melt in the rain. Or ice farm and no snow farm uh, so then I've got a little chest here with some wooden uh, shovels and you can come up here and and just pound the little patch of snow that the snowman leaves behind and pick up the snowballs and just go through and it was wooden wooden shovels which wear down pretty quickly but then got a bunch of them and I've got a tree behind me that I can chop down to make a bunch more wooden shovels and when it breaks yeah you're done and so they flow in here and then you collect them up and make snow blocks and I needed the snow blocks this is my tree to make this which is a snow farm or ice farm and yeah, there's the bed. 
So, with the Silk Touch Axe, or Silk Touch pick, Pickaxe, come down here, and I built the sides of it out of, out of snow because snow is slower to break than ice with the Silk Touch Pick. And the, uh, the little pistons are slower to break as well. So then much less chance of actually of accidentally breaking the farm. So let me just quickly uh, run through this. And then I'll flick that switch over there and you can see how, how it refills. And we're up high enough that it's we're at a freezing level. Um, so it'll, it'll work. That gets me about four stacks. A little over three stacks. I'm missing some there. Blop. Yeah, four stacks of ice uh, per per run. And when it rains over here, it, it snows. So if I click on this, it lets water out, and then the water starts to it fills in because I've got two whole sides, and we get an infinite pool. So then the water, because where we are at high up, it starts to freeze. So anyway, this is pretty handy stuff. Um, everyone needs an ice farm. I'm going to go to sleep. And in the morning, so then out over this way, I believe it's out over this way. There's a water world village. Yeah, there we go. This village spawned almost entirely on the water, which is kind of cool. Ow. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this is uh, this little village area. Now there's some villager, there were some villagers. Yeah, there's villagers here. And now, oh notice, they're almost all undifferentiated. Interesting. So now, if I were I haven't really done anything with this since um, the the village and village update. Um, so so now, of course, I would selectively turn some of these guys into villager into farmers and all that good stuff. But at this point, none of them really have any trades. There's a couple of villagers. There's a couple of farmers over here. Hi. Yeah. So there's a few trades here. Um, and I remember having, wanting to get rid of all the wheat in the, the farms, and it was constant struggle, because somebody had wheat seeds in their pocket, and somebody's beetroots in their pocket, and so they were wandering around and just doing all sorts of uh, naughty stuff. I was trying to create a gluten-free village. But, uh, and interestingly, because of the way villages work in the previous version of the game um because the doors because the the size of the village was such that none of them would actually wander past about this point here it was kind of weird so all the villagers even the ones that were over here all kind of migrated over to that side of the village and that's kind of where they stayed and i know the village mechanics are very different now so I might be able to rectify that, but and I put up fence gates around the whole thing to key and lit it up to keep zombies out. Um, just trying to protect the village a little bit. So anyway, I think that's the bulk of what was out over this way. I know there was a lot of a lot of whoa. A lot of exploration got done with when the elytras became a thing. Um And the world size grew really huge. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to reset the server is because the backups have gotten gargantuan and I and I, I had to turn off automatic backups because the server kept filling up just with the backup file. So um, yeah. I think I think there's an island over here that I lit up. So this is my Taiga Island. 
Some of these other islands we lit up and did some stuff with. Oh, wait. I think... No, no. There, Yeah, there's an island over here that's got some stuff on it. I don't entirely remember what it is, though. So I'm not going to look too hard because I don't want to get lost. Anyway, so that's all the stuff over to the south. Next time we will explore a little bit to, I guess, the east and see what's over that way. We got a couple couple builds. The like Barb Mix Things has a nice big build that we'll take a look at. And we will go um, out to the, the aquatic update area. Let's see, we got some ice up here already. And, uh, and see what gone on out there. So that's it. I think we'll cut this off here. I think that's a good place to stop. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time on Minecraft Land Party. Bye.